congratulations, you got yourself a recall audition. So you got yourself through the first round and now you're thinking, okay, how do I prepare for a recall audition? What is gonna be expected of me? How do I approach this? So first of all, let me break down what an audition panel are actually using these different rounds for. So the first round audition is gonna be looking at your capability and your suitability. And that's the round that you've already got through. So when it comes to your capability, they actually want to see if you can do the job, if you can do the acting. So first and foremost, they want to actually check whether you're any good or not. And in the second instance, they want to check your suitability. So in a professional context, they're actually looking to see if you are completely suitable for the character that you were auditioning for. The audition panel, the casting director or the director who's actually auditioning you, might not be able to gauge just from looking at headshots or just from looking at your showreel, whether you are or are not the right fit for that particular character, which is why they invite you in for an audition. So the suitability factor is them checking whether your, uh, your voice, your look, your energy, the creative choices that you're making, whether they're in alignment with the vision that they have in mind for that character. And then in terms of if you're auditioning for drama school, they want to see if you are suitable for the course, for that school themselves. No one drama school is alike to another, so they're going to be looking for people who not only can actually do the acting, but that actually fit their kind of ethos, their energy within their school system. It's kind of like dating, you want to make sure that you're both kind of compatible for each other. But now you've got that first round out of the way, so you now know that you are capable and that you are suitable for what you're going up for. Which, hey, is a massive win in and of itself. So you actually need to acknowledge, hey, I did something really, really good here. I know that I'm good at what I do. And that doesn't mean resting your entire self-esteem on whether somebody does or does not validate you or not but just acknowledge that that's a win, that you, you're you one step closer to getting the thing that you want. But that also, because you are one step closer to the prize, then the second round, the recall, is likely gonna bring up some more nerves for you, just because you are getting closer to the thing that you actually want. So now for the second recall round for auditions. So the big thing that I want you to take away from this video, if you take away nothing else, take away the fact that the audition panel are not looking for you to come into a recall round with a completely different way of working and a different interpretation of the script or the scene or the the speech that you were doing initially. You want to go in with your original performance because after all that is the performance that got you the recall in the first place. They clearly liked what you were doing enough to actually invite you in for a recall so stick to your guns on that. If you second guess yourself or think, oh, I'm gonna improve this, then you might actually be going towards missing the mark even more. So stick to what you were doing initially because that's what they actually want to see coming back in the room. Wait until they actually give you notes, give you redirection in the recall and then adapt and change. Don't do it initially. So recall rounds come in many different shapes and sizes and you might find that certain audition panels or certain schools will be using recalls to look at different things. But in my experience, what recall rounds are generally used to see is whether you are adaptable in the moment, to check that you're not a psychopath, your willingness to collaborate, and to see how you work creatively and instinctively in the moment. There might also be a consideration for chemistry or compatibility with our other actors or an ensemble or the school itself. So the first thing that an audition panel will be checking the instant you walk into the room is whether you are a psychopath or not. Now look, I'm being very, very flippant when I say that, but the sentiment does hold true. They're not necessarily checking whether you are insane or not, but they are going to be checking what kind of a person you are. They don't always gauge that from a self-tape audition because mostly that's gonna be you performing the character as opposed to you being a person in front of them and actually talking to them and toing and froing with them. They want to see if you are gonna be a person that they want to collaborate with, whether they want to actually have you in the room, whether they see themselves creating alongside you. They want to see if you're somebody that they would be excited to be in a room, in a rehearsal room with or in a year group at drama school with. So they're gonna use the recalls to detect any kind of attitude your energy, your personality, whether there's gonna be any clashes there. Now, the best thing to do in this situation is just be yourself. Now, I know that that is such an overused phrase, but if you're gonna come in and try and pretend to be somebody else, 
then if you actually get the job and you end up in a rehearsal room or you end up in a year group and then you're a completely different person, then that could really, really backfire. And at the end of the day, you are not gonna be all things to all people. You can't be. There are The saying is that you could be the ripest peach in the world, but there are people in the world that still don't like peaches. You cannot make every single person like you. And nor should you. You go in and actually behave the way that you genuinely would, the way that you would approach the work. It doesn't mean be a dick, it just means be yourself. The next thing that they want to see is whether you are adaptable or not. So usually they'll have a little chit chat with you and then you're gonna jump into the work. So they're just gonna wanna see what you did originally. So that is why you go in with your initial choices in the first instance, because it jogs the memory of the panel who have likely seen up to hundreds of people for that particular role or for that drama school. They want to actually just kind of remember, oh yeah, of course you did that and we liked that, fantastic. So that's why it's really important to not adapt to your choices in that instance. It gives them a better understanding of what they actually could give you note-wise to see whether you are directable or not. Now you don't just want to be a one-trick pony when it comes to your acting ability. If you're only capable of doing the scene or the speech in one particular way, then the redirection is really going to expose you. So the important thing to do when you are given redirection is first of all, listen to the redirection. And I actually say that deliberately. The amount of audition panels that I've sat on and redirection is given to the person auditioning and they just kind of look blankly and smile and nod and go, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they don't even take on the redirection. They go off and they either do exactly what they did before or they kind of do some really weird choice that wasn't asked of them because they weren't listening. They were just saying yes. Now that is mostly uh, a nerves based thing where you can't actually take on any more information because you're already second guessing yourself and thinking ahead. So you need to train yourself and challenge yourself to actually just simplify what's going on behind your own eyes and focus on what is being asked of you. Simplify it and really get it into your head. And if you are really struggling to actually understand and digest what is being asked of you, if you just don't understand the redirection, if it's really vague or if it's kind of contradictory or you know just something that you don't fundamentally understand, then ask for clarity. The audition panel want you doing the best work that you are capable of doing in the moment. So if giving you a little bit of clarity is gonna help you on your way, they will be more than happy to oblige. And then you are going to take that redirection and you are going to play it 100%. That means basically throwing out everything that you were doing prior, all of your own kind of, your initial intention, and you are going to take on purely the redirection that was given to you so that they can actually see range. They can see that you can shift and adapt from one thing to another. The worst thing that you can do and the worst thing sitting as an audition panel member myself is giving someone redirection and either they don't do it at all and they just kind of carry on doing what they've done before or they just do it 50%. If they just kind of do it half-heartedly, just just enough that you can see that there's just a little glimmer of, of change. But I'm sorry, if you're only going to commit 50% to a note in an audition stage, what extent do you think the panel is going to think that you're going to commit to it in a rehearsal room for four weeks, in a year group for three years, or in a performance setting. If you're not willing to put in the work at this stage, we're not gonna have any faith that you're gonna put in the work at any other stage. And the whole time that you're doing all of this, they're going to be gauging what you do creatively and instinctively in the moment. Self-tape auditions tend to be curated by you. You can cut little bits and pieces out, you can edit it so that it is nice and finely tuned and it's just kind of polished in a performance. With an in-person audition, they get to see the kind of rough and ready, how you get into the mind of a character, how you take on redirection, your thought, press, your thought process around that. They actually get to see how you work. So lean into that, use that as an opportunity to properly collaborate with them. Regardless of whether you're auditioning for drama school or whether you're auditioning for a professional production, it is always a collaborative experience. And that goes for the audition as well, all right? There is no one person that is above another person. You're all part of a big team going towards one kind of end goal. So behave as an equal, ask questions, investigate, get curious about the work. If they can see that you are eager and switched on and have a willingness to actually explore and investigate and take on notes, if you're actually kind of eager and, and enthusiastic about taking on notes and, and finding a different way of working, 
that is only ever going to work in your benefit. Those are the people that as an actor, as a director, as an audition panel member, as a drama school teacher, those are the people that I want to work with. And I think I can speak for a lot of industry professionals on that account. So make sure that you are using those recall rounds to actually get into that way of working, that creative instinctive way of working in the moment. There we go, they are my top tips for approaching, preparing, and actually executing a recall audition. I hope that you found this really, really helpful and useful, and if you did, then just make sure that you pass this information on to other actor friends that you have who are approaching recall auditions as well. But until next time, thank you so much.